As long as you're two, you won't be one. And until you're one, you'll never have dominion. Dr. Tony Evans says husbands and wives have to be united to exercise the spiritual authority God gave them. When you're operating as one and you go to God as one, you rule as one. Prayers are getting answered. God comes into history because now you're ruling as God intended you to rule. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. A divided home can be a miserable place to live. But Dr. Evans says that's only the beginning of the trouble when a husband and wife don't work together under God's authority. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 2 as he explains. God rules in the heavens, but he has given the earth to the sons of men to rule. The implications of that are staggering. Because what it means is, is that God has decided to respect your decisions. And that much of his action will be determined by our action. While he has maintained a base of sovereign boundaries, a sphere where he will not allow man to trespass on, he has opened up a field of play where we get to call the particular play and he will respond accordingly. That explains a whole lot. It explains why God allows, how can a good God, a great God, a powerful God allow that to happen? Because let them rule. I will respect within my sovereign boundaries their decisions. God planted Adam in a garden. He planted in the sphere of his calling. From every tree of the garden you may freely eat. The essence of your Christian life should be measured by what you get to enjoy, not what you are denied of. Then, verse 18 says, after God had created man as a successful single, then, after God had given man his divine framework in which he was to operate in, then, The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Now God has spent the whole week talking about what's good. There's one thing missing in this creation and that is Adam is alone and that's not good. Adam was created first on purpose. The Bible says that. We're going to look at the passages. It says Adam is created first. Why? Because he was supposed to be head of the home. He was supposed to be the head in the church. The Bible says that. It says he was created to be head. So before woman was created, God created him and set him straight underneath God. He was to be subordinate underneath God. She was to be subordinate underneath him. He was to be, watch this now, subordinate underneath God. You're getting ready to see that. She was supposed to be subordinate unequal to him, but when it came to function, subordinate underneath him. She was to be equal to him, male and female, but when it came to function, like Jesus is to the Father, subordinate to him. Now here's the kicker. The subordination of the woman under the man was tied to the subordination of the man underneath God. If the man refused to be subordinate underneath God, it would show up in the rebellion of the woman and her refusal to be subordinate underneath him. There is a process of subordination that allows rulership to occur. Because the man is created first. Out of the ground, God forms every beast of the field, every bird of the sky. He brings them to man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. He gives him the cattle and the birds of the sky and every beast of the field. Naming involved exercising dominion over the creation underneath the creator because God brought it. So it starts with God. It was given to man and man names it. 
Verse 20 says, however, but for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So he sees Mr. and Mrs. Bear, Mr. and Mrs. Zebra, Mr. and Mrs. You know, Aardvark, Mr. and Mrs. Roach. He sees Mr. and Mrs. Because all the animals are created at the same time. So he's watching this come along. He's just naming them and naming them. And everybody's paired up. But for Adam, what did God do before he made Eve? He let Adam see what he was missing. In other words, a need had to be created before a woman would have been made. Because the woman was to help him. And so God uses this naming, this dominion calling in order for him to name. So he evaluates, he assigns the proper name in order to bring creation under his control. The name stuck, whatever he named them, that was its name. Now watch this ladies. The Lord God, once he realizes he can't do this by himself, causes Adam to go to sleep. I love this phrase. So the Lord God, verse 21, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. If God puts you to sleep, you go sleep. <laughs> then he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh at that place and fashioned a woman from the rib which he had taken from the man. God performs surgery. He slits Adam's side and takes the side away. Adam right now is only half the man he used to be. Cause a big part of him is missing. While he was single, he had both ribs. Now that he's married, a rib is gone, a whole a side, this cavity has been removed. And God fashions the woman. God took his rib and he crafted. A woman from the rib. Now, if Adam wants his rib back, if he wants what he's lost, he's got to get it from the woman because the woman has it. But the woman, if he's going to get his rib back, is bringing more back than he lost. Because he lost a piece of him, but God took a piece of him and made a whole something new that was a lot like him, but different from him. Hot and cold are alike because they're both temperatures, but they're distinct and different. Red and yellow are alike because they're both colors, but they're distinctly different. Man and woman are alike because they're part of mankind, human, but distinctly different. He was to get back his rib, and in getting back his rib, he was to get back more than he started with. Remember, the idea is a helper. So God took part of him and made more in her so that when he brought her to him, there would be an asset he did not have when he started. So he made the woman and brought her to man. So God is in the matchmaking business. He's playing Cupid here. Because he goes, the man is asleep. He goes, makes a woman and brings the woman. Ladies, she wakes up. The first thing she sees is God. She doesn't know anything about Adam. She's an adult woman. The first thing she sees is God. She doesn't say, oh, I'm 25 and I'm not married yet. No. <laughs> she puts her hand, watch this now, in God's hand. And it says, God brought her to Adam. You don't have to go clubbing to find him. You don't have to get on the internet and see who am I like. You don't have to do all that. All you got to do is put your hand in the hand of the one who God knows that rib belongs to him. Because you start searching for your own ribs. And you're going to find yourself in a mess. Now you pursue your calling unto God until he hooks his sister up. The Lord God fashions a woman with the rib and brings her to man. So God made a hook up. Some of the places you ladies are going to look for men. I'm going to talk about that man. 
if the key to the man is your being able to help him fulfill his calling unto God, if that's the key, everything else is a bonus from that key, then you want to find a man who has that as a concern. And if the places you go in to find him does not have that as part of the concern of that environment, you're in the wrong location and are delaying the hookup to the right man and you're going to wind up with either nobody or the wrong man who's messing over you, beating you, cussing you out, disrespecting you, dishonoring you, but you got one. No, your job is to compliment his calling. So if he doesn't even have one and is not looking for one, and I can tell you now, if he doesn't have a job, he ain't looking for a calling. Anyway, he brings her to man and says, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She shall be called woman. Okay, ladies, this is why you have to take your husband's name. Okay, I get these, you know, feminist types. I want to keep my own name. Okay, well, keep your own life. She takes Adam's name. Adam's name means man. She's man taken out of Adam's womb. So he calls her womb man. Guess what he does? Name her. What he named her became her name because it is the role of a man to name his woman. And to name his woman is not only nomenclature, it is to exercise governance over as long as the man is underneath God. It is to exercise authority, legitimate authority over. So if that woman is not willing to come under your leadership and your leadership is legitimate, if you're single, that's not, I don't care how pretty she is, you're going to be pretty miserable. If she does not willing to come under your authority and respect your authority, what do we call God? We call him Lord. What does the Bible say in 1 Peter 3 that a woman should call her husband? Lord. The same name that we as men use to God, a woman is supposed to be able to use to her husband, but the idea is she doesn't mind using it because you're governing so good. You're governing so well. You're leading so strongly. You're directing so clearly. But if she's not willing to do that, then you're in for war, World War III. Now, the other side is true. She won't submit. Has it ever been illustrated to her? Because you're supposed to be modeling the submission you're demanding. We'll hear more about what it means for two to become one when Dr. Evans continues our message in just a moment. Right now, he's here with this thought for us. You know, radio is the bread and butter of this ministry. If God is using our message to enhance you, to grow you, and to deepen you with him, would you remember the ministry of the Urban Alternative? You know, salvation is free, but uh, ministry costs. It costs us to do what we do with staff and equipment and material and time and all of that. And so would you come alongside of us so that we can keep the word of God in your life? God bless you. Staying on the radio is our largest expense here at the Urban Alternative. And it's only because of faithful friends like you that we're able to keep Tony's teaching on this station. So if you get in touch with us and make your contribution right away, we'd like to send you the CD version of Volume 1 of our current series, Marriage Matters, as our thank you gift. Contact us today to make your contribution and request your copy of Marriage Matters before this special offer runs out. Just visit TonyEvans.org or give us a call day or night at 1-800-800-3222. That's 1-800-800-3222. Right now, here's Dr. Evans with more of today's message. Now we have the nuptials, first wedding ceremony. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Please notice it's the man leaving his mother or father. There is nothing said about a woman leaving her mother and father. And in this particular context, there is no mother and father. Adam doesn't have a mother and a father. 
A man is supposed to leave his father and mother. Now, what does this mean, to leave your father and mother? The word cleave means to bond or stick like glue. That's what cleave means. In other words, his priority attachment and his priority relationship is to be his wife. Now, let, let me make I'm sure we all understand. He's not to dishonor his mother and father. One of the commandments is to honor your mother and father. That includes how you talk to them. That includes financially supporting them if that's needed. You are to honor your mother and father. But what you are not to do is place the relationship of mother and father over husband and wife. Now, the man is to leave mother and father. He's to cleave to his wife. And here we are, here we are. This could be a whole sermon here. And the two shall become one flesh. When a woman gets pregnant, a sperm infiltrates an egg. In fact, there's a wraith on. To see who gets there first. Because everybody's headed toward this one direction. To penetrate the egg in order that the two, egg and sperm, become one so that something new is brought into existence. Stick with me here. This principle is illustrated in childbirth. The two, egg and sperm, become one and out of the one, something comes into existence that's never ever existed before. When the two become one, just like in, the, in a pregnancy or conception, the same principle is true. The reason most marriages today are in trouble is the two don't want to become one, refuse to become one, so they function as two while living as one. In other words, they still occupy the same space, they sleep in the same bed, they go to the same house, they eat at the same table, but not as one. They do it as two. But the purpose of marriage wasn't for two to stay two. It was for two to become something that never ever existed before and that is one. You hear it in all kind of ways. This is my money, this is her money. This is my car, this is her car. This is my, her, my, her. They talk in terms of two. Now I'm not talking about having different accounts for different things. I'm talking about a mindset that is two. As long as you're two, you won't be one. And until you're one, you'll never have dominion. You'll never rule because Satan will always be able to block the rule because whenever there is division, the Bible says God steps out of it. You must decide as a couple, we are going to be one. Now that doesn't mean males become females and females become males. It means that we're going to operate on the same page. We're going to be one. Since your salary and my salary make our money one, we will talk about having uh, our bills paid by us and as part of that, you have some spending money and I have some spending money, but that has come out of an agreement that we have made because the goal here is one, not trying to make two work. So we spend all of this time trying to make two work when God is not interested in two. He's interested in one. He's interested in a sperm getting into an egg, creating something that has never, ever existed before. The problem today is that people don't want one flesh. They want two flesh and wonder why they can't have one marriage. You can't. Uh, Malachi 2 says, I created them one spirit. By the way, there's three parts to this. Body, soul, and spirit, okay? Body, that's mutual attraction, physically. That's the first attraction, because that's the first thing you see. Then that's soul attraction, okay? That's personality. That means you jive with her personality, she jives with your personality, you have shared interests, shared uh, intellectual orientation, you can talk about the same kind of things, and people call it having a soul mate, okay? That's, that's a soul connection, all right? Then there is spiritual, that's a shared faith. 
The spiritual is the most important. You, you're ultimately looking for a spirit mate because the souls, even if they're compatible, they're still different and the body gets old. So, I mean, you're putting too much weight on something that ain't going to last that long. Because however good you look in the 20s, give me 20 years. And all that's going to change anyway. He says, and the two shall become one flesh. Because oneness produces dominion. That's why he says in 1 Peter 3, 7, if the husband is not studying his wife like Adam studied the animals and came to a naming conclusion, if a husband is not studying his wife, know what she ticks, know her moods, can think her thoughts before she thinks them because he has studied them and you can't study somebody you aren't talking to. You can't study somebody you're not around. You can't study somebody who you're not hanging out with. He says when a husband studies his wife, if he does not relate to her based on that study, tell him not to pray for I will not hear his prayers. When you're operating as one and you go to God as one, you rule as one. Now prayers are getting answered. God comes into history and begins to turn things and change his things and flip things and flop things because now you're ruling as God intended you to rule. Finally, he says, and the man and the wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Let's just put it this way. Adam was having a lot of fun whenever he wanted to because there was no blockages, there was no hindrances, they were not ashamed, there was nothing limiting the intimacy, there was nothing getting in the way of the intimacy, there was nothing competing with the intimacy. They were at ease, they were flowing, they were, they were on the same page, they were, they were grooving. Nudity was normal. They were both naked and that was normal. That was standard operating procedure. Now in the Bible, the, the biblical portrait of sex is it's normal operating procedure. You ain't got to talk people into it and fight at them and fuss at them and threaten them. And you, don't, you ain't supposed to have to do all that. You're supposed to flow. As long as you're two, you can't flow. You only get the flow if you want. Here's what we're saying. That you've been created to rule and there comes a time when God decides you're no longer to rule alone. Now he did get to rule alone for a while, however long that was. But there comes a time when you're not to rule alone. Once you are married, you are to rule to becoming one. And then you will see the power of God double because you're operating his way. Dr. Tony Evans talking about what it takes for husbands and wives to reclaim their spiritual authority at home, part of our current 14-part series, Marriage Matters. Remember, if you contact us right away and make a contribution of any amount to help keep Tony's teaching on this station, all seven CDs in Volume 1 of this collection will be yours as our gift. Get details today at TonyEvans.org before time runs out. When you do, don't miss your last opportunity to take advantage of a very special offer. Dr. Evans' newest book, Kingdom Marriage, is due to be released on Thursday. But if you pre-order it now, you'll not only be among the first to receive it, but you'll get a collection of free extras along with it. The first is an audiobook copy of the bestseller Kingdom Man, recorded by Tony himself. You'll also get the ebook version of Raising Kingdom Kids, a 50% off code to use on anything in our online resource center, and MP3 downloads of three never before released marriage related messages from Tony. This special offer ends tomorrow, so don't put it off. Visit tonyevans.org today to get the details. That's tonyevans.org. We also have staff members standing by in our phone center to help with your resource requests. You can reach them day or night at 1-800-800-3222. That's 1-800-800-3222. Tomorrow, Dr. Evans explains why the problems facing our families are too serious to be solved with worldly wisdom as he talks about how to break down family strongholds. I hope you'll be with us. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.